One of the best things about Creative Cloud is the CC Libraries panel. It is extremely useful in all CC applications, but in this video we will take a close look at its role in Adobe Illustrator. This tutorial is part of a comprehensive online course called Adobe Illustrator Masterclass. You can check it out and try the free trial if you want to learn everything there is to know about this amazing industry standard application. Since the introduction of Creative Cloud libraries, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign and the other Adobe applications became better connected than ever before. In this video I'm going to give you a brief introduction how it works. And if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, this is something you must try out yourself. So the panel that you need is under Window and it's called Libraries. So let me open that up. And I created a library called Illustrator Masterclass, but you can create as many libraries as you want. Normally it would be a library either for a project or a client or even a type of work that you do. And these libraries would be accessible from all the other Adobe applications as well. Now let me show you how you can save an asset into a Creative Cloud library. If I select one of these illustrations, all I have to do is simply drag and drop it in. When I let go, it will be added as a graphic and I can easily rename it. I'm just going to call this backpack. I can select this other one and again drag and drop it in and now it's saved and I can call it Lodge Logo. If I select a text object, it is best to decide how I want to import this by choosing Add Content and checking the attribute that I wish to save. So it can be saved as a graphic or a style or just simply the color that I used on it. So let me try that first. I turn off all the rest and I choose Add. As you can see, it will show up as a color. But then again, if I choose now the graphic option, it will be saved as an outlined artwork. Once again, if I go back and I choose character style this time and choose add, then it will be saved as a style, which means that I can easily apply it to any text that I have in Adobe applications. So it means not only Illustrator, but also InDesign or Photoshop. Just to show you how quickly I can reuse any of these elements, I'm going to switch to an empty document and I'm going to bring one of my graphics in here. Let's try this one. So I just drag and drop it in and I can scale it. Of course, it's completely vector based, but notice that it says it's a linked file. That is because it is connected to my Creative Cloud library, which means of course I can edit this by choosing edit original, but that means it will be updated on all my projects, wherever it was used since I added this to my Creative Cloud library. So if I change the wording here, remember our other name that we had, Shelter, and I save this, so I go up to File, Save. This will update in the library as well, and if I come back to my actual empty project, it shows up there, but not only there, it will also update in the other document. So using Creative Cloud Library assets are very similar to working with symbols, but they are even more advanced than symbols because they can be used in different Adobe applications at the same time and they will update in all of them at once when you edit and make a change on the original asset. Another thing you can use the libraries panel for is to search on the Adobe stock website. So let's say I'm looking for a tent. I'm just going to type that in here and this is going to search for images but I can look for illustrations specifically, or I can even choose vectors as the filtering option. And the cool thing is that if I find something that I like, I can add this into my library. So I can save this and it will show up as a graphic here. And I can even drag and drop it into my project. The only thing is that because it's not a licensed asset, it's going to have a watermark on it. It's still good to preview and check whether it's going to work with the style that I'm working on. And if my creative director or the client approves it, then I can buy the license for it, which would be as simple as right clicking on it here and choose license image. Once you built up a library that you would like to make public and make it accessible to other Creative Cloud users, 
You can do that from the panel menu by choosing share link. Once you click on this, it will open up a browser window where you can turn the private option on to public, which will immediately generate a link. You can also decide whether you allow people to follow, which means that they can see but not download your assets. If you allow save as well, then that means they can save copies of your assets into their own projects. And similarly to sharing your library, you can actually invite creatives who are also Creative Cloud subscribers to collaborate and add their own assets into the same Creative Cloud library. The way you do that from the browser by clicking on plus, which will invite the collaborators. You just have to add their email address here and decide whether they can edit or just view the library. And while you are in the browser and going through your account, you can also check all the libraries that you created, make changes to them or even delete them. That's only something you can do from the browser. And you can also find your mobile creations here. So all the different things that you've done in the Adobe mobile apps. So if you haven't started using Creative Cloud libraries yet, I highly recommend to give them a go because they can really streamline your creative workflow. In the next video, we are going to talk about the last stage of the creative process, archiving a project.